Hey guys, if you're watching this video, you're probably trying to figure out troubleshoot your hot water boiler system, whether it be natural gas, oil fired, um, it would be what they call a hydronic hot water uh, heating system. So I'm going to show you in this video how to swap out uh, a circulator pump and I have one go bad so I figured this would make a good video. Uh, I'm going to just show you how I troubleshoot it and figured out that it was bad. Uh, I have some other videos you could check those out if you're trying to troubleshoot your system. Uh, in my previous videos I talked about how the system works, how a hot water hydronic boiler system works and also how a zone valve works. So if you can troubleshoot up to this point that it's not your zone valve and it's not under some other part of your system, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot um, the circulator pump, which is this guy right here. Uh, I didn't put in this plumbing system, so this mess is not mine. i am just inherited this mess, and I haven't gotten around to getting someone to either upgrade it or me to actually fix it. So anyways, so if anyone's going to have any comments about the bad plumbing, well, that's not me. It was the previous owner. Um, anyways, it's just a bad job. I know it's a bad job. Anyways, let's talk about troubleshooting the circulating pump. So over here I have the boiler system itself. Right here are circulating pumps as well. I can hear that this one is working for the heating loop. Um, what In my system I have two pumps to circulate water through my heating system into um, baseboard heating. It could be the same for a radiator. But the way I can test to see if these work is I listen to them. And you can I'll put the microphone up see if you can hear it. So this one is actually working. This guy up here, see if I can move the light a little closer. This guy right here isn't working. So I'm going to swap this guy out and I'll show you how I was able to figure it out besides just listening to it. I also need to know if the boiler was working properly with electricity going to it. So the way I do that is I use a non-contact voltage meter. I have two of them right here. This one here makes a sound. And then I have this one. The other one made a beeping sound and this one, when I hold it up, it, you see the red light, no red light red light. So I know that I'm getting electricity through the line into this, into the pump. So I know that I have power going to the pump. So I know my pump is bad because it's not circulating. Now if I fidget with it, I can sometimes get it to run. If I turn this switch on, there. Now it's working again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power down the system, isolate this valve, sorry, power down the system, isolate this pump so that no water, not too much water comes through. I'll drain just this section here and then I'll take this pump out and then put in the new pump. It's as simple as that. So to troubleshoot it basically I just need to know that yes there's power going to it and no it's not circulating. Right now it's running and I can hear it and I'll just put the microphone up to it and you can kind of hear it hopefully. But before it wasn't making that sound um, until I fidgeted with it and now it's running again. So I know this pump is bad. It wasn't, it didn't start working. I know this pump is bad because it didn't start working until I started messing with it. So I'm going to swap it out. I know that I have no problems with the thermostats, the heating's working, so let's swap this guy out. So to swap this out, it's pretty simple. I have two flanges on either side. I'm just going to remove the bolts, shut down, like I said, shut down the water, isolate the pump, take this off, pull this out, put the new one in with new gaskets, tighten it back up, um, turn the system back on, bleed it if you have to. I have automatic bleeders, so I don't need to do that. So first things first, I'm going to shut down the boiler. So here is the the electrical board so it's powered off now now I'm going to isolate the pump so I'm going to shut these valves off these are the return lines then I'm going to 
going to follow this all the way over to here and I'm going to shut this one off and that isolates my system actually I should turn off the back one here too all right now that we have the pump isolate so no water will back out of the whole drain the whole system we need to take off the electrical so we're going to disconnect the electrical first before we start disconnecting the main flanges So I'm just going to take a minute, scrape, clean off the flanges before I put in the new, uh, new pump and gaskets. All right, so here's our replacement pump. I'm going to put the gaskets on, on either side. And you note, there's a check valve in this pump and it's also it goes in one direction so my return is going this way so I want to make sure it's in line going in the proper direction Now I'm just going to connect the yellow to the hot according to the, the uh, install guide. It doesn't really matter which one you would connect to what. The white to white. Moret these off. I'll put the cover on later. But let's fire this up and see if it works. Turning all the valves back on. Make sure that you repressurize your 
system up to about 12 PSI or whatever the uh, system spec is supposed to be. You want to make sure that you're running with the proper PSI or else you get cavitation in the impellers of the circulator pumps, which is not good. It'll wear out the pump prematurely. Fire the boiler back on. Well, I know I have power to it and it seems to be working. So the cycle on first works. So now we'll wait for the boiler to get up to full, to get up to full temperature until it starts circulating uh, water for heat. The pump is working. I can hear water circulating. That's because there's air in the system now because I had to drain it a little bit. Um, I have automatic bleeders. That'll bleed out in about a day. If you don't have automatic bleeders, you'll have to bleed the system. That pretty much shows you how to replace a circulator pump in your hydronic hot water heating system. All right, so I don't even hear that much uh, air in the lines anymore. The automatic uh, bleeder valves are working, so that'll do it. The circulator pump is installed. It's working great, no leaks, which is always a plus. Like I said, I'm not a plumber. Um, I'm just sharing what I know. Hopefully it can help some of you guys out. So if it did help you out, give this video a thumbs up uh, so other people can find it. Uh, all right, until the next video, thanks for watching. Bye.